Have you ever wondered why the news plays the same five stories again and again? Let me give you a little hint. Brainwashing and repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing. Join me as we look at the news cycle and talk about why the mainstream media is so gutless and afraid to report the truth. Cooking, guys. Happy Friday. Welcome to Troubled Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and this is the show where the conspiracy is the news. Yeah, that's right. Propaganda, misinformation, disinformation, all the rest of the bullshit we're supposed to believe. Well, here we are to talk about it, because if we don't, who's going to? Hope everybody's well out there, and uh, yeah, Friday Friday does have a little bit better ring than Monday, doesn't it? Even though I always say Monday doesn't suck, your job sucks, uh, Friday just kind of tastes a little bit sweeter, and uh, here we are. Uh, talking about Friday, talking about Troubled Minds News, and tra- talking about transparency and how uh, not just transparency in the world uh, is not really a thing anymore, but also how it should be. And if you want to be part of the show at any point, uh, tell me, hey, I like the show or feedback or uh, talk about any of the articles I'm bringing up or whatever. I'm here, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at TroubledMinds.org. It's as easy as that. And uh, we'll put you on the show. Bing. Bingo, bingo. All right, let's roll it. Let's do the news. What do you say? Shall we do the news? Shall we play a game? Well, let's do it. Uh, Let's go to, uh, where do we start? Where do we start? What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing great out there. I see in the chat. Thank you for hosting, Eli. Let's go. Let's do it. We got this. Elon Musk is at it again, this freaking guy. We were just talking about this. Look, this is uh, this is why Troubled Minds is different. Uh, this is the same from the uh, exact same interview that I read the other, or not didn't read, I listened to the other day, uh, this past weekend. Uh, Elon Musk says a Tesla's humanoid Optimus robot will be worth more than the car business. And this is from CNBC. And uh, so this is this is what, you know, they, they listened to what I listened to, and then they wrote, this article right and this is cool and this is what he said but also they were talking about robot human relations and sexy time so well uh, troubled minds did that (laughs) you guys know most of you were probably there but uh this is um this is this is amazing this is uh this is the world we live in may you live in interesting times and this is definitely it uh straight from the article tesla's humanoid robot will one day be the most valuable part of the company's business ceo elon musk predicted on Wednesday. Musk said on Tesla's first quarter earnings call that the importance of the robot, dubbed Optimus, will become apparent in the coming years. Quote, I was surprised that people do not realize the magnitude of the Optimus robot program, Musk said Wednesday evening. Those who are insightful or who listen carefully will understand that Optimus ultimately will be worth more than the car business and worth more than full self-driving. That's my firm belief. Musk, uh, Musk said that that the first models of the bipedal robot would next would arrive next year, though e- experts are skeptical about that timetable. Musk is known for giving overly optimistic predictions. Uh, like to dig in there? You like to dig in there? My goodness. Uh, he is years behind schedule on a 2016 promise that Tesla would deliver full self-driving cars by 2017, and recently said that Tesla is currently not working, or not currently working, on a $25,000 self-driving vehicle that he said in 2020 would launched by 2023 uh, so yeah there you go as always right he actually addressed this too in that uh, that that interesting um, uh, thing thing on uh, YouTube there uh, that uh, the interview that I watched last week he basically said look I make a lot of predictions because people you know I do interviews like this a lot and people are asking me a lot of questions you know and they he's uh, and they ask me and so I guess and so when I guess uh, you know I, I would say maybe around this time they, they roll it they put it to the press and then you know then they collect all the things I've got wrong and they line it up you know he's like but nobody ever talks about what i get right or what you know the 
the rest of that. So he's he, he's completely correct in that manner. But it's just um, it's always a uh, marketing, right? It's always about uh, you can tell a hit piece when you when you can tell a hit piece, and this is part of it, right? What's going on, guys? I see in the chat. How's everybody? Uh, here you go. So uh, there's the Optimus robot. There it is. There's if you ever wanted uh, to know what your uh, your future sexy time looks like, well, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so Musk first announced the robot last summer at Tesla's AI Day, a series of tech talks hosted by the company to recruit machine learning talent. In the announcement, Musk brought an actor dressed in a bodysuit designed to look like the robot on stage and had him dance for the audience. Musk said the goal was to create a machine that could drive labor costs down. And there you go. There's your Optimus Grimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, this is what I was saying, right? Imagine this this robot and it's got that green screen skin thing so you can make it look like whatever you want to look like, right? And uh, bang, there you go. There's your Kate Beckinsale right there. <laughs> your, uh, your Kate Beckinsale uh, the robot pulling weeds in the yard. <laughs> 702-957-1037. What's going on, guys? Hope everybody's doing great today. Happy Friday. And uh, that's what we're doing. We're just hanging out talking about the news because uh, yeah, damn right we are. All right, let's go to interesting engineering. Uh, this is a good one. I, I forgot to link that first one. So let me do that as well. And uh, as you guys know, I, I prefer that you see my sources where I get this stuff from. I'm not making bullshit up. Uh, the world really is as crazy as it seems. So uh, here's the uh, the actual uh, <laughs> information and uh, where it came from. There we go. All right. Let's go to interesting engineering. This one's pretty wild. Check this out. Um, the new bacteria bricks could be the building blocks for future Mars habitats. What? Yeah, bacteria bricks. That's a T-shirt right there. What the hell does that even mean? Yeah. Uh, in a paper in the journal PLOS1, the researchers outlined their plan for combining Martian soil with a gel-like material called guar gum, urea, nickel chloride, and bacteria st- and a bacteria strain called, oh boy, uh, Sporosarcina pasteuri. Yeah, there we go. And my my, my uh, Latin's on point. All, all, of the, uh, all of that would form the building blocks for habitats on the red planet. The proposal joins a list of odd building material proposals from Mars that reflect the scarcity of materials for future mis- missions to the red planet and the requirement to make most uh, the most of any and every resource available. Last year, for example, the University of Manchester proposed building Mars habitats with astronaut blood and pee. What? <laughs> yeah, it says it right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, th- that's not some weird Mars ritual, is it? To call in Cthulhu? <laughs> uh, binding Martian soil. Here we go. For their, their proof of uh, principle experiment, the ISRO scientist used Martian soil simulant and demonstrated that the bacteria transformed the urea into crystals of calcium carbonate and also secreted a sticky biopolymer substance. Boy, that sounds delicious. <laughs> what the fuck? The, the nickel chloride helps the bacteria grow despite the soil's high iron content, which is typically toxic to bacteria. The specific type of bacteria also helped to overcome the issue of porosity, one of the main obstacles to building habitats on Mars. Quote, the bacteria seep deep into the pore spaces using their own proteins to bind the particles together, decreasing porosity and leading to stronger bricks, explained uh, Alok Kumar, one of the senior authors of the paper. Combined, this material can be used as a building agent to hold Martian soil together and build habitats for future missions to the Red Planet. Currently, NASA estimates it will send humans to Mars by the 2030s, and SpaceX is hard at work on its fully reusable Starship launch vehicle, which it aims to send to the moon and eventually to Mars. There you go. There you go. Bacteria bricks. What do you think about that? 702 957 one zero three seven. Yeah, sounds like an STD. Totally right. What's up? Robert says my robot was granted emancipation by the court, so now I have to pay her for her maintenance until I die. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's so crazy. What's up? Derek says, feels like a way to make some type of sentient black goo monster, right? Yeah, uh, this is this is nuts. This is one of those, um, well, uh, I guess I guess uh, desperate times, desperate measures on Mars, right? Now, we, ain't, we ain't there yet, but uh, I mean, if you're going to be making crazy stuff there, it may as well be bacteria bricks. What can you do? Where are we at time-wise? I think we're good. Everything's good. Yep, we're fine. All right, let's keep on trucking. Let's go to uh, Popular Mechanics. Yes, one of my favorites. Popular Mechanics. What's up, Joseph? How you doing? Uh, my robot is a chicken, but it's against California law to perform, I mean, own a robot with hooves. <laughs> yes. Okay, here you go. All right, speaking of crazy stuff, a Popular Mechanics. Scientists just found a mystery insect organ. Hmm. 
What? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's see. The uh, It's not every day you find a new organ in the body of not one, but three different groups of insects. That is, unless you're the team of scientists who very recently discovered a sensory organ that picks up vibrational signals in leaf hoppers, spittle bugs, and plant hoppers. Yeah, now we're talking. The vibrational signals are generated by what the researchers refer to as timbal buckling, the movement of the sound producing organ, combined with oscillatory motions emanating from the abdomen that travel along plant surfaces. Much like a telephone line, one insect will create the signal, and another critter along the same surface will hear it with the help of their abdominal sternal plates. From there, the vibration is transmitted to the cord chordotonal organs with the hell which are responsible for perceiving said vibrations thus completing the communication exchange the team made up of scientists from several german institutions published their findings on april 13th in biology letters uh, this right here this discovery is exciting for many reasons first it can be used as a sort of pest control method to keep certain insects that have the organ including some leaf hoppers leaf hoppers from damaging native flora if we can find a way to interrupt these signals we might be able to slow the reproductive process of the more harmful insects. Second, it upends what we previously thought about communication between these group of insects. Uh, yeah, pretty soon we're gonna they're gonna stand up and just say, "Hey, I'm I'm walking here." That's what's gonna happen with the insects next, right? Uh, what can you do? I don't know. You can keep on talking about the news. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. Click the Discord link troubleminds.org. We'll put you on the show. There you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'll be. Fun. Fine. That'll, that'll totally be fine. Uh, we have an update on uh, a, a news update. Boop, 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 breaking news. Uh, let's go to your favorite president. And remember, if he's not your favorite president, then you're a bad person. Um, uh, Thehill.com. Obama points finger at tech companies for disinformation in major speech. Oh, man. Look, uh, Obama's back. Yes. Former President Obama placed blame on tech companies for failing to address the disinformation problem. He said, the industry has amplified during a speech Thursday at Stanford University. The new information ecosystem fueled by the rise of dominant social media platforms is, quote, turbocharging some of humanity's worst impulses, he said in, uh, end quote, he said in the roughly hour-long speech. He continued, but not all problems we're seeing now are an inevitable byproduct of this new technology. The, they're also the result of very specific choices made by the companies that have come to dominate the internet generally and social media platforms in particular. Uh, decisions that intentionally uh, or not have made democracies more vulnerable, he said. Notice how everything's always like like a, uh, an attack on democracy with these guys. It's like, come the fuck on. Everything can't be an attack on democracy as they're like, you know, they move themselves to uh, uh, to, to uh, basically attack democracy, right? It's like, again, clown world. This is just all, all such just, just a big joke. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I, I, I agree with Obama here that these social media companies are clown shoes, but also uh, he is too. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Let's just, uh, let's call, call a spade a spade. Sorry, Obama. Clown shoes. Um, uh, honk. Uh, so Obama has in recent months taken a more active role in the public conversation around mitigating disinformation. Earlier this month, he spoke on the topic at, at a conference organized by the University of Chicago and the Atlantic. On Thursday, the former president advocated for a multi-pronged approach to combat disinformation, including from government reform, tech employee-led change, and a shift in the way users consume news and information online. And there you go. Quote, at the end of the day, the Internet is a tool. Social media is a tool. At the end of the day, tools don't control us. We control them, and we can remake them, Obama said. Mike also added, Obama is a tool. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. What do you think? Clown shoes, clown world. Here we go. Uh, we, we're due, uh, James, we're due for a clown world show, a uh, upside down of the upside down, the answer show instead of the question show. We're due for one of those. What do you think? Uh, or let's go. Let's keep on trucking. Where are we at time-wise? I think we're good. Uh, speaking of clown world, yeah, clown shoes. Okay, uh, let's go to, uh, yo, here's more. Uh, here's another uh, Obama update while we're at it, and then we'll We'll take a quick break. Uh, we got this. This is, uh, yep. Wow, the, the news just keeps getting worse for this, this poor guy. Uh, New York Post. 
Why Spotify dropped its deal with Barack and Michelle Obama. Oh, can't do this Saturday, but we can definitely schedule something. All right, copy that. Uh, the, the, let's see. The Obamas are searching for a new home for their former podcast after Spotify reportedly declined to offer the former first couple a new contract because they didn't make enough personal appearances on the streaming service. Hey, look, all they got to do is show up and like talk for an hour and these people can't even do that. Come on now. What's going on? What's up, camera guy? How you doing? What's up? What's up? Uh, hydro hose. Everything floats down he- here. Here. Uh, anyway, Barack and Michelle Obama are reportedly in talks with several companies, including Amazon's Audible and iHeartMedia, on a deal that would likely be worth tens of millions of dollars, according to Bloomberg News. Damn. The ex-president and the former first lady who co-own the production company Higher Ground will reportedly decide on their podcasting platform of choice sometime within the next few weeks. Higher Ground is said to be seeking an arrangement that would allow it to release shows on several platforms simultaneously. Uh, no exclusivity here. We want to get the information out. Uh, one of the sticking points in negotiations with Spotify was the Swedish company's insistence on an exclusive licensing deal. Has anybody listened to the uh, Obama podcast? Yeah, me neither. I mean, let's be real, right? Let's be real. Um, uh, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. Let's Let's get a uh, word from our sponsor, which, of course, is you. Let's uh, press that button. Let's press this button. All right. Here we go. Beat right back. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. Okay, let's keep on trucking. More Troubled Minds news on the way. Let's do it. Uh, let's go to, uh, this is local12.com. I'm not sure exactly which local this is. Uh, WKRC. Is that Cincinnati or was that WKRP in Cincinnati? I don't know. But uh, yeah, check this out. This, is, this would be awesome. Uh, scientists say there could be life on Jupiter's moon. And we may discover it soon. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Here we go. Scientists believe that one of Jupiter's moons could be hiding alien life. Uh, Researchers say that Jupiter's icy moon Europa could be a hospitable environment for life, according to a study. The subterranean pools of salty water would allow for certain forms of simple life to exist. Ground-based telescopes revealed that Europa, a 2,000-mile-wide moon, has a possible ocean Ocean, located 10 to 15 miles below the surface. Europa has ice ridges like Greenland's ice sheet, leading scientists to believe that shallow pools could exist on the moon, which could potentially circulate chemicals necessary for life to exist. Uh, scientists believe that Europa's ice ridges were created similarly to how Greenland's were created. Subsurface water that froze and fractured repeatedly. And those pools on Europa likely will lead to finding alien life on the moon if it exists there. Yeah, now we're talking, right? Now we're in business. Uh, we're talking alien life because uh, this is troubled minds after all. And um, uh, what do you think? This is, this would be super amazing, right? We're, we always talk about alien life in terms of across across the, uh, the Milky Way and stuff like this. But in this case, uh, we're talking about in our own solar system now, right? Now, that, now that's good. That's good. Um, let's see. It says NASA plans to launch the Europa Clipper mission in 20. 20- 2024 to study how the ridges were formed on the surface and understand more about the moon. When we drop in a submarine, sploosh into the ocean and uh, find the find find the critters down there. Wouldn't that be amazing? Let, yeah, let's do it. Let's get let's get up there. What are we waiting for, people? Come on now, launch that MFR yesterday. Let's roll it. Uh, what's up, Bernays sauce? Oh no, Europa. Open the pod bay doors. Right, exactly right. You you weird pod people. What's up, pod people? Seven zero two nine five. Five seven one zero three seven. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. Hope everybody's doing well today. Happy Friday. And uh, let's keep on rolling. Let's keep on trucking. Let's go to uh, SciTech Daily, one of my favorites. Uh, 
uh, it's actually you know not very very much uh, very much uh, propaganda most times and that's 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 hey I'm easy these days you just gotta like not do propaganda constantly and I'm a fan right that's it it's simple as that uh, SciTech Daily reports humans disrupting 66 million year old fundamental feature of ecosystems and quote this hasn't happened before ah oh, see I man I had to say it and then here they are with propaganda right anyway uh, according to a new study the you saved U-shaped association between diet and size in modern land mammals could also stand for universal, as the relationship covers at least 66 million years in a range of vertebrate animal groups. Uh, there's been several decades since the ecologists realized that graphing the diet-size relationship of terrestrial mammals yields a U-shaped curve, where aligning those mammals on a plant-to-protein gradient. Um, as illustrated by that curve, the plant eating herbivores on the far left and meat eating carnivores on the far right tend to grow much larger than those of the all consuming omnivores and the invertebrate feasting in, uh, invertivores invertivores there you go in the middle what the hell's an invertivore uh, to date though virtually no research had to look for the pattern beyond mammals on the, uh, or the modern day in a new study researchers from the University of Nebraska Lincoln and institutions on four continents have concluded that the pattern actually dates back to deep time and applies to land dwelling birds reptiles and even saltwater fishes deep time yeah now we're talking does that does that sound hot deep time mm, boy However, the study also suggests that human-caused extinctions of the largest herbivores and carnivores are causing a disruption in what appears to be a fundamental component of past and present ecosystems with potentially unpredictable implications. Oh, nice. I like unpredictable implications, right? Why not? Why not? Uh, quote, we're not sure what's going to happen because this hasn't happened before, said Will Gertie, a postdoctoral researcher at Nebraska and co-author of the study published April 21st in the journal Nature. Nature, ecology, and evolution. He continues, but because the systems have been in what seems to be a very steady state for a very long time, it's concerning what might happen when they leave that state. Uh, yep, and there we go. You can see it here. The evolu evolutionary and ecological histories of animal species can be told in part through the intertwined influences of diet and size. Here's a graph. Uh, there you go. Full screen so you guys can check it out. In all its glory, herbivores, omnivores, carnivores, and invert invertivores. What? what the hell's an invertivore anybody know what the hell that even means uh back when i was in school i'm pretty sure that didn't exist anyway uh it's uh here we are uh, pretty pretty cool stuff uh this is well science science doing science things right yeah exactly deep deep time this sounds like a rogue topa song i'm uh, telling you what that's that's gonna be i'm writing that down you guys uh, keep coming with the rogue topas the uh the, so the, the, the if, if, for, for those of you the uninitiated rogue topas is the name of the troubled minds band that's coming out one of these days but uh so the, that's the name of the band but uh we we need names of rogue tulpas songs so uh here we go i'm gonna write this down because uh, this is super funny we'll get a rogue tulpas t-shirt coming to the uh, troubled mind store because <laughs> that's funny as fuck uh let's see hold on one sec i gotta write it down or i'm gonna forget there we go merch ideas all right rogue tulpas what, what were the what were the names of those uh those songs you guys remember rogue tulpas and uh we got uh what's that uh, deep time there we go there's the name of the song uh, <laughs> all right 702-957-1037 click the discord link troubledminds.org and uh we'll put you on the show easy as that i hope everybody's doing well happy friday just uh hanging out talking about the news doing doing our weird stuff like we always do uh let's continue shall we let's go to uh cnbc uh cnbc the most trusted source in news oh wait that's that's the other assholes my bad uh cnbc report Reports this. Uh, how this? This is here's your conspiracies, right? House Republicans demand Twitter's board preserve all records about Musk's bid to buy the company. Uh, are there shenanigans going on behind the scenes? Are they actually uh, breaking the law to thwart Elon Musk's uh, hostile takeover? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe a group of 18 House Republicans is asking Twitter's board to preserve all records related to Elon Musk's offer to buy the company, uh, setting up a potential congressional probe uh, should the party win back the majority this fall. Oh, boy. Majorities. Majorities. 
minorities, whatever. In letters shared exclusively with CNBC, Republicans of the House Judiciary Committee asked Twitter board chairman Brett Taylor and other members of the board to preserve any messages from official or personal accounts, including through encryption software that relate to Twitter's consideration of Musk's offer. Quote, as Congress continues to examine big tech and how to best protect Americans free speech rights, this letter serves as a formal request that you preserve all records and materials relating to Musk's offer to purchase Twitter, including Twitter's consideration and response to this offer and Twitter's evaluation of its shareholder interest with respect to Musk's offer, said the letter led by uh, ranking member Jim Jordan, Republican of Ohio, who's also mm, a giant douchebag. And uh, well, there you go. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, just in general terms, I don't know the man personally, but he's a politician and uh, that's probably all I need to know. Uh, What do you think? Do you think they're going to find some shenanigans? Should they take over the uh, majority coming up soon? Which they they may because it's looking bad for the Dems. Uh, But who cares really because it's all kabuki theater if you ask me. Uh, 702-957-1037. You're listening to Rogue, Rogue Topas. And this is a track called Deep Time. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. My bad. Uh, let's keep on trucking, shall we? <laughs> let's uh, let's go to uh, interesting engineering. And um, let's do this. We'll go. Uh, a startup plans to fight climate change with genetically engineered super trees. Yeah, now we're talking super trees. Uh, the company's popul- uh, poplar popular poplar could absorb over 50 percent more carbon than a normal tree this is fine this should be fine right and what happens when these trees start eating people this, this, this is fine. There's no problem here, right? Uh, let's see. A, a, um, a, is old-fashioned photosynthesis up to the task of managing the enormous amount of carbon that we're pumping into the atmosphere? Uh, yep. A biotechnology startup in California doesn't think so. Yeah. That's why researchers at Living Carbon have been hard at work manipulating arboreal DNA to make a new type of tree that more effectively captures atmospheric carbon and holds onto it for a very, very very long time, and they've made a lot of progress. Uh, Human Tao, a company's VP of biotechnology, leads the team that figured out how adding a few genes from pumpkins and green algae could supercharge photosynthesis, significantly increasing the amount of carbon an engineered tree can store in its tissues. IE, interesting engineering, sat down with Tao to discuss what his team has accomplished and how it might, might, help solve one of our planet's biggest challenges. Uh, there you go. Uh, everybody thinks this is fine? The uh, a super tree, right? Hey, 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 I'm, I'm growing here. I'm, hey, I'm growing here. Hey, leave me alone, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Man. What happens when it turns into little shop of horrors? I mean, I've seen that, right? I've totally seen that. Uh, um, well, you tell me. I don't know. I don't know how this ends, but uh, this, is how, this is how many zombie movies begin. How about that? It's going to be like the ends from uh, Lord of the Rings walking around, right? They're like, hey, can you scratch my back? I can't reach you with my branch. Yeah, that's what this is going to turn into, isn't it? 702-957-1037. We're, uh, this is Trouble Minds News. We're just hanging out talking about crazy stuff because that's what we do here. That's Hey, if we don't do it, who's going to do it, right? All right, let's go. Let's keep on trucking. Let's do one more and then we'll take a quick break and then, uh, boom, feed me. See more? Exactly right. Here we go. This is, uh, yeah, uh, this, is, this should be fine too. Let's just do this, right? Uh, in an effort to curb Lyme disease, scientists hope to release thousands of genetically altered mice on Nantucket. Yeah, this should, this should be fine, right? They're doing mosquitoes and uh, genetically modified mosquitoes in Florida and California. I mean, they're going to do it with mice now in Nantucket. This should be fine. You know, like, uh, the world is going to be a pretty crazy place coming up pretty soon, if you ask me. Oh, look at that mouse. That's so adorbs. Uh, as, as, from Nantucket. Uh, there, there once was a man from Nantucket. No, I'm just kidding. As spring emerged on this island of manicured estates and idyllic beaches, a group of scientists Scientists from the Boston area, hey, Bean Town, arri- uh, arrived on a recent afternoon with an extraordinary request for local officials. Let us release hordes of genetically altered mice into the wild. Hundreds of thousands of them, potentially. Yeah, this is fine. This should be fine. The engineered rodents would look exactly like the native white footed mice, uh, but each of their cells would carry genetic codes specifically tailored in an MIT lab for resistance to the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. White 
white-footed mice are a key reservoir for the harmful bacteria. And uh, because mice breed so quickly and prolifically, the scientists are betting the genes of the new rodent would predominate soon after the release. The immunized mice, they hope, would curb the spread of Lyme, which has increased dramatically here in recent years and is now the most common infectious disease on the island. If fewer mice carry Lyme, the scientists say, fewer ticks that bite them would become infected. That, in turn, would mean fewer ticks that bite humans would carry Lyme. Which, which is becoming more prevalent throughout New England as a warming climate allows more ticks to survive winter. Yep, uh, with so many people suffering from Lyme every single day, which is an awful disease, we need a solution urgently, said Joanna Buckthall, a research director at the MIT Media's Labs Mice Against Ticks Project, who has close friends who suffer from Lyme and other tick-borne diseases. This offers a real, if revolutionary, way to tackle the problem. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We'll, we'll have uh, uh, ants walking around, eating people, feed me, see more. We'll have like uh, GMO mice uh, just gobbling up Bean Town. This, this is going to be this is going to be okay. No, no, don't worry, guys. The, the future looks it's so bright. You got to wear shades. All right, let's do it. Let's uh, click the thing, do the thing. Uh, you're listening to Trouble Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More coming up after the break. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange. And some mornings that iced coffee just tastes better than others. Ah. Friday. Happy Friday. Let's uh, let's go to LiveScience.com. How are you guys doing? Hope everybody's well. Uh, here we go. This is, yeah, good stuff. This one's good stuff. This one goes out to a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, part of the band Rogue Tolpas. I think he plays bass. His name is Derek in Massachusetts. Uh, LiveScience.com. Largest crown jellyfish ever discovered is a blood red saucer-like weirdo. The crown jellyfish, A. Reynoldsi, has between 26 and 39 tentacles. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, did, did they find spawn of Cthulhu? What's going on here? Uh, scientists have discovered a new species of crown jellyfish that looks like a scarlet alien saucer in the sunless midnight zone of California's Monterey Bay. The newly described species, Atola Reynoldsi, which is weird, measures about five inches in diameter and can have anywhere from 26 to 39 tentacles, researchers with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute said in a statement. Like the other 10 known species of the Atola genus, a Reynoldsi sports a deep groove running around its central bell, giving its body the appearance of a domed head wearing a frilly red crown. Yeah, uh, that's not much wider than a dollar bill, and a Reynoldsi seems to be the largest of the known species of Atola jellies, the researchers said. Yeah, jellies and tentacles. Uh, sounds like a bad a bad manga, right? Uh, however, what really sets this jelly apart from its cousins is what it's missing. Unlike all other currently known species of crown jellyfish, a. Reynoldsi lacks a single elongate tentacle, one th- a long, thin tentacle that trails behind its body, measuring up to six times the diameter of the jelly's bell. According to researchers, a crown jelly uses this extended appendage to help snag prey, which can include crustaceans, uh, siphonophores, and uh, other small creatures that pass through the ocean's midnight zone. Uh, while uh, analyzing thousands of hours of footage taken in the Monterey Bay's midnight zone between April tw- 2006 and June 2021, MBARI researchers occasionally spotted crown jellies that lacked the signature trailing tentacle. The team suspected that they had discovered three new crown jelly species in the bay, but sightings were too too rare to prove it. Now, in a uh, new study published March 16th in the journal Animals, the researchers have conclusively identified one of the unknown jellies as the new species A. Reynoldsi. Uh, the team studied 10 specimens of the mysterious crown jelly, including both physical specimens and sightings from archival footage to conclude that the species is molecularly and morphologically distinct from all other known species in the genus. There you go. Uh, Baby Cthulhu, 
Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Uh, 702-957-1037. It's Trouble Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange. Uh, yeah, come say hi. Uh, call, click the Discord, do the thing. Uh, looks like everybody's fine. We're all fine here now. And, uh, the, yep, all right, good, 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 good. All right, make, just making sure everything looks good. Let's keep on trucking. Uh, just in case uh, things aren't going to get super weird, super fast, uh, uh, and you think that these, you, you know, bizarre jellyfish and GMO mice and uh you know the walking ants that are like hey i'm walking here uh well things are about to get even more spicy on planet earth because of course they're reopening cern oh yeah uh this is from cnet one of my other favorite sources here uh cern's large hadron collider restarts after three-year upgrade yeah. The particle collider will, will reach a record level of energy in the coming months, scientists say. This should be fine, right? This should be fine. This is cool. I'm down with this. Uh, the LHC, or Large Hadron Collider, restarted in Switzerland on Friday after more than three years of inactivity due to maintenance and upgrades. Two beams of protons uh, circulated in opposite directions around the particle collider at 3.16 a.m. Pacific time. So when we were uh, partying it up last night, guys, uh, the uh, over there on Discord showing off our troubled minds hats, the um, CERN was firing up. <laughs> and uh, there it is. Uh, according to CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN studies particle physics the fundamental particles of matter the large hadron collider is a particle accelerator that smashes protons a type of hadron particle together at close to the speed of light scientists then analyze the results of these collisions to get a better idea of how the subatomic subatomic world works exactly and 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 there's shiva <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, we got to upgrade more energy than ever. Uh, quote, the machines and facilities underwent major upgrades during the second long shutdown of CERN's accelerator complex. CERN's director for accelerators and technology, Mike Lamont, said in a statement, the LHC itself has undergone an extensive consolidation program and will now operate at an even higher energy. And thanks to major improvements in the injector complex, it will deliver significantly more data to the upgraded LHC experiments. Friday's beams contained a relatively small number of protons and circulated at 450 billion electron volts. CERN's beams boss Rody, uh, Rodri Jones noted in the statement, the team will gradually increase the energy and intensity over the coming months until they deliver at a record energy of 13.6 trillion electron volts. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right? 13.6 trillion with a T electron volts. This should be fine. Uh, this will allow physicists to conduct a more thorough study of the Higgs boson, a particle theorized by Peter Higgs and other scientists in 1964 and essentially discovered as a particle in 2012 using the Large Hadron Collider. And there you go. There it is. Should be fine, right? Walking trees, GMO mice, mosquitoes, and, and, and the particle collider firing back up with uh, 1.21 gigawatts. Oh, sorry. Uh, I take that back. 13.6 uh, trillion electron volts. Well, same difference, right? Uh, well, it's not a hangover if you start out, if you start hungover <laughs> or if you start over. <laughs> oh, boy. What's going on, guys? Hope everybody's well. What's up, Jay? This, yeah, this is fine. This should be fine. Uh, this, <laughs> this is good. Uh, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubledminds.org. What's going on, guys? Happy Friday. I hope everybody's well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's see. What do we got? Looks good here. Uh, looks good there. Okay, everything looks good. Looks good. All right, uh, let's go. Let's uh, let's go to Mars, shall we? Well, we haven't been to Mars in oh, at least a couple of days. So uh, let's uh, news dot yahoo dot com. That's right. Yahoo's still a thing. It, it, it hasn't it hasn't shut down yet. Uh, stunning new eight K footage shows Mars crater like never before. What? Uh, yep, a new video gives armchair astronauts one of the clearest looks yet deep inside a crater on Mars. 
YouTuber Sean Doran used an image taken by the high resolution imaging experiment, the high rise camera on NASA's Mars reconnaissance orbiter earlier this year. He wrote in the YouTube description that the image was denoised, blended, graded, and rescaled to create a stunning video. Uh, Doran also included the song Itasca. It's a glowing red hot from the album Music from Neptune Flux by Chris Zabriskie. Yeah. And of course, uh, soon they're going to add uh, the song Deep Time by Rogue Tolpas, but uh, not quite yet. Uh, anyway, the University of Arizona, which created and operates High Rise, called it the most powerful camera ever sent to another planet. If you guys haven't seen this footage um, from this High Rise camera, it's uh, it's interesting. It's uh, here a minute. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. I just I can't make this full screen, but but yeah, I mean, um, I know how to do this actually. To to do the, I've messed with the High Rise uh, foot the the raw data and the. Um, the software to be able to kind of um, you know have make it look like you're flying over the plains of Mars, uh, and uh, I don't know. I think this is um, this this looks pretty wild. Check this out as it comes down. Like I muted I muted it so you can't hear the you know the song because well you know copyrights and all that. But because uh, Twitch is not real real keen on that stuff just yet. But here's the crater. Looks like a Massive, gorgeous Mars crater. Yeah. Yeah. That's hot. I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, you guys have the links. You can check it out full screen and whatnot. But this guy, uh, Sean Doran, actually, uh, let me pull this up and you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, I thought about doing this because he totally is just doing this and uh, killing it with uh, with views and whatnot. Look at his channel. His channel is, um, yeah, this is 107,000 views. Uh, he, he uploaded this on April 15th. And his, uh, his actual channel has this many uh, viewers. Check this out. 24.7 million million views and uh how many subs does he have uh he's got a lot of subs uh i don't know anyway he's, he's and it's uh, mostly just planetary stuff like you know with like some music and like uh yeah i mean that's crazy right that's a lot of damn views one hundred seven thousand views so uh anyway uh just there you go uh mars and it's and it's full glory, 8K glory, and um, the, the links. So actually, I'll link it right here. Take it easy, James. Uh, let's see. James has got to do his thing, right? He's got a thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, got to hop in the shower. Oh, uh, later, later, Derek. Uh, not James leaving. Derek, Derek leaving. Derek's got to get to work. Uh, things got to be stocked. Because if uh, hey, if uh, you don't stock the beer, uh, I can't go find the beer. Yep. Yep, go easy, buddy. Later. All right, here we go. So there's the actual YouTube channel if you want to check it out. It's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. Again, um, I'm not in the camp where I believe um, um, space is fake. I'm not in that camp. So uh, I do I do enjoy the uh, space porn, as uh, APOT calls it. So, uh, yeah, let's keep on trucking. Uh, what do you think about the 8K footage of Mars? Is it fake? Is it somewhere else? Or uh, there you go. All right. Now good, good, good. And I thought uh, uh, I saw a by James. I thought I thought you were leaving James. Is the by James? implies anyway uh, yeah hey, i'm stalking here yeah, exactly right here we go we got uh with the next web the next web check it out uh which is wait where we at time wise can we do this yeah 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 let's do this one and then we'll finish up with this this last batch um this is uh yeah the next web new experiment demonstrates that reality might actually be real oh <laughs> hey, who knew? Who knew that reality might actually be real? I mean, yeah, this is a good thing we have science, right? Uh, forget theoretical physics. Let's talk about experimental reality, it says. Yeah. A team of scientists recently conducted an exciting quantum physics experiment, allowing them to demonstrate that reality might actually be real. Uh, well, don't everybody applaud all at once. It's actually an amazing feat of science. Okay. All right. Uh, let's start with a simple question, the article posits. Uh, how do you demonstrate that reality is real. You can pinch yourself, but that only demonstrates that you're capable of per, uh, perceiving pain. Fictional characters can experience pain, so that doesn't give us uh, anything to go on. In fact, uh, as this individual wrote in a recent uh, neural newsletter, we can't be 100% sure we don't live in a doppelganger universe or a simulation. And because of that, there's no way for us to be certain that we're not fictional characters ourselves. Oh, burn. However, for the sake of argument, let's just assume we are here and real and that our universe actually exists. If that's that's true. We should be able to demonstrate in some way, no matter how strange, that our reality is in fact objective. 
All right. Uh, the problem is that reality isn't so simple as our ability to perceive it. What you or I experience as objective reality can differ significantly. This is straight from that article on the next web, written by a guy by, by the name of Tristan Green. Uh, I've read his stuff before. Pretty good work. Uh, and uh, here you go. In order to truly determine whether there's an objective reality, we have to devise a way in which to demonstrate its existence without relying on our observations. We've already established that our senses are meaningless here. What we need are measurements. Yeah, now we're talking. And that's exactly what the aforementioned team of scientists who are led by Brazilian physicist Pedro Diegues, Diegues uh, set out to do what they conducted the experiment that one day could be referred to as a keystone in our quest to define and demonstrate objective physical realism. Here you go. According to the team's research paper, we show that in disparity with previous proposals, our setup ensures a formal link between the output visibility and elements of reality within the interferom- interferometer. I don't know how the hell you say that. Let's just see what my Microsoft Mike has to say about that. Uh, let's try. We show that, in disparity with previous proposals, our setup ensures a formal link between the output visibility and elements of reality within the interferometer. See, sometimes you make things more complicated. Interferometer. Okay. <laughs> uh, an experimental proof of principle is provided for a two-spin half system in a interfer. Uh, again, I still can't say it. Interferometric setup implemented in a nuclear magnetic resonance platform. Uh, we discuss how our results validate, to a great extent, Bohr's original formulation of the com- complementary principle and unveil morphine reality states. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you tell me. Uh, new experiment or old experiment is. Is reality actually real, or is it just uh, an article on the next web? And we're all just uh, NPCs in Elon Musk's MMO, because <laughs> you never know. Yep, right. Uh, most people in the Matrix don't know they are in the Matrix, right? What's up, Matt? Uh, Robert says, if reality is not viewed as the same for everybody, it is therefore not objective. It is subjective, and that's what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, what do you guys think about objective reality, subjective reality, about reality at all? Well, is it a thing or is it not a thing? 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. We'll put you on the show. Let's take one final break and then finish this up. Uh, be right back. More Troubled Minds on the way. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. Okay, also, thank you to the people who have subbed up to Twitch. And remember, if you're doing it through Amazon Prime, it's sort of out, out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. Uh, but you do have to re-up that monthly or it just uh, kind of falls off by the wayside, to the wayside, by the wayside, whatever the hell they say anyway. it's It stops it stops working. So uh, please uh, please take a moment and uh, re-up that. Uh, man, okay. Uh, let's see. This was not paywalled just a moment ago, but it is now. So I'm going to do the, uh, the trick. Do Wayne Dibley trick. Watch this. Hold my beer. I don't even have a beer yet. It's too early for that, but hold my beer anyway. Uh, so we'll skip that. Oh, there we go. Already archived eight hours ago. See, somebody's somebody's ahead of the game. Uh, this is from the Washington Compost. Check this out. This is uh, the surprising voyage of Charlie Duke. An astronaut reaches for heaven. Yeah, right? Here we go. To hear Charlie Duke tell it, his life's most important moment did it not come 50 years ago today, when he became the 10th and youngest of 12 people to walk on the moon. It came six years later as he sat behind the wheel of his parked car alongside State Highway 46 in New Brunfels, Tex... Tex... Texas, Tex? Uh, I don't know. What's that mean? Uh, he felt lost by then, unhappy in his marriage, emotionally distant from his two young sons, unfulfilled in his post-NASA career selling beer. 
How, how's that unfulfilling? What the fuck, bro? Anyway, but that day, he and his wife, Dottie, finished a weekend Bible study retreat, and in the car afterward, he became a born-again Christian. If this conversation story ended there, he, uh, he would have plenty of company, but Duke would in time embrace a literalist interpretation of the Bible that contradicted all he accomplished as an astronaut and scrambled his expert understanding of the heavens. Uh, on the triumphant Apollo 16 mission, he picked up a rock scientist reckoned to be 4.46 billion years old, a relic of an ancient lunar crust that offers insight into the formation of both moon and earth and the long evolutions both have undergone since. So interestingly, this is a, the story is about um, this, this individual. Uh, I, I uh, recommend you read the whole thing because, of course, this, this is a nice piece, but it, it, it also is um, very long and it it's uh, sort of describing... Um, yeah, remember how we talked about this? The uh, the the, the uh, they went to the moon, maybe not to explore the moon, but maybe to reach out to something in the cosmos through some sort of bizarre ritual. Well, uh, this is this uh, merges heaven and NASA in one long article. It's a 17 minute estimated read, uh, very very uh, long and deep and uh, thorough. And uh, wow, uh, this may be uh, maybe we do a circle back around and uh, talk about the rituals on the moon and the moon landings and whatnot. Uh, there you go. I've been born again and again and again. <laughs> yeah, right. The born again and again. Hey, that's another, uh, that's another um, Rogue Topa song. Born again and again and again. <laughs> Who's got the backing vocals? All right, let's go. Businessinsider.com. Uh, this news just, just warms my cold heart. Uh, Zuckerberg in his metaverse. This freaking guy. Uh, Mark Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse obsession is driving some current and former Facebook employees nuts. Quote, it's the only thing Mark wants to talk about. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Now you know. Now you know. Mark Zuckerberg is so wrapped up in building the metaverse that it's becoming a point of frustration for people who work for him, according to several current and former Facebook employees. Uh, it's, quote, the only thing Mark wants to talk about, according to a former director-level employee who recently left. Now, the company is messaging the hell out of the new focus, spinning up teams that are metaverse-specific, including one that will reach across all groups within the company and be asked. Tasked, uh, sorry, tasked with letting people know there is a metaverse playbook. This person told Insider for a story delving into its big strategy pivot and current business struggles. Yes. Yes. All right. Sometimes uh, some staffers are still confused, though. Quote, it's basically fomenting disorganization and anxiety, one current employee said. He continued, quote, people don't really seem to know what to deliver or what to work on because there is still no coherent strategy. A spokesperson has said the company is going through a defining period for the company, and we're going all in. Quote, a lot of people are excited, but they have a lot of questions at the same time, this spokesperson added. Uh, Facebook has renamed itself Meta. Last year, it lost $10 billion on its Reality Lab segment, which handles metaverse projects. It intends to spend that much this year, too, and possibly for many years to come. Zuckerberg has said the metaverse is a long-term project that won't be fully developed for a decade or more. There you go. Well, hmm. Ah, oh, Zuckerberg. This alien, this weirdo alien. What's up, Bernays sauce? In other words, it's like CNN Plus. Yeah, yeah. Lose a bunch of money and then have to shut it down because nobody's using it. Yeah, that would suck. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubleminds.org. Come say hi. Come meet all these fine folks that uh, that are not just in the chat here. You're typically active on the Discord. And uh, call into the shows and uh, all the good stuff. Lots of good folks. Uh, appreciate you guys. Let's go. Let's roll it. SciTech Daily. Last one here. Let's do this. Yep. Remember, reality may indeed be real from that other article. In this one, well, time might not exist, <laughs> according to physicists. Uh, so reality is real. Time doesn't exist. Okay, got it. Taking notes, taking notes. This is from April 19th. Uh, yeah, uh, here we go. Physics is in crisis. Dun, 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 For the past century or so, we've explained the universe with two wildly successful physical theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics. 
dun, 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 dun. Anyway, uh, quantum mechanics describes how things work in the incredibly tiny world of particles and particle interactions. General relativity describes the big picture of gravity and how objects move. Both theories work extremely well in their own right, but the two are thought to conflict with one another. Though the exact nature of the conflict is controversial, scientists generally agree both theories need to be replaced with a new, more general theory. Physicists want to produce a theory of quantum gravity that replaces general relativity and a quantum mechanics uh, while capturing, capturing the extraordinary successes of both. Such a theory would explain how gravity's big picture works in the miniature scale of particles. Uh, but it turns out that producing a theory of quantum gravity is extraordinarily difficult. One attempt to overcome the conflict between the two theories is a string theory. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, string theory replaces particles with strings vibrating in as many as 11 dimensions. Now we're talking. However, string theory faces a, for a further difficulty. String theories provide a range of models that describe a universe broadly like our own, and they really don't make any clear predictions that can be tested by experiments to figure out which model is the right one. Anyway, so we need to know a new physical theory to explain the universe and that this theory might not feature time. Suppose such a theory turns out to be correct. What would it follow that time does not exist? Well, as they say, it's complicated. Yeah, hey, hey, life is complicated. And it depends on what we mean by exist. Well, if reality is real, but time doesn't exist, and I don't freaking know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I don't. Uh, hey, I'm talking here. 702-957-1037. Let's go to, uh, I'm not sure who this is. Welcome to Troubled Minds. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? It's Bernays. Bernays, what's up, bro? How are you? Happy Friday. Not bad, Jimmy. You you should go back and uh, do a reversal on that uh, beta uh, produced thing that Zuckerberg did, where you had the picture of him looking at himself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the quotes on there, we, we could we could do a reversal. We got a reversal show coming up in the, the, the near future, I'm sure. Why not, right? The reversal of the reversal in the mirror image too. <laughs> it, it, well, it's been it's been reversed. It's quite interesting. Oh, has it? It actually. Oh, I see. The, the image has really. No, no. The, that he does a storyline. That's how it starts. Is his image, and then he does a storyline about beta. And through the whole thing, it's it's in there. I see. Okay, I didn't I didn't see this. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have a link for I, me? You Can probably you... didn't see his. Uh, you didn't see his ad for beta. Is basically what it is. His introduction to beta. <laughs> it's more like his introduction to his Bible of beta. Yeah, I, I saw the memes where they were, you know, not, not talking about meta. They were calling it beta, right? Because of course, <laughs> obvious oh, reasons. I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm old and confused. It is beta or uh, meta. Meta, beta, not well, beta. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm old. I get confused easily anymore. Join the club, my friend. Join the club. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, yeah. Well, uh, but I'm ser- I was just. I wanted to give you a good lead on that because it is solid all the way through. Wouldn't it be hard for new to catch on to it? Okay, I will definitely look into it. To be able to understand. Perfect, perfect. I will check I'm into sorry, it. I'll let you go. Finish your show because the only thing I've ever uh, about string theory is a string will trip me, and the gravity storm that it entails is terrible. Right? So, so, so don't you know, do that. You, don't do that. Well, you know, hit yourself. That's one hell of a gravity storm. That's all I know. <laughs> all right. All right. I appreciate that. Don't trip on the strings and string theory. Otherwise, you've got a big problem on your hands. And maybe for the rest of us, too. You're the best, bro. I appreciate it. Brene Sauce here, affectionately known as BS. Uh, thank you for the call. Happy Friday, my friend. That's right. Happy Friday, brother. Thanks a lot. You too. Appreciate the phone call. There it is. Phone line works. That's Bernays sauce. And uh, I'll have to look into this. Maybe this uh, reverse the reversal of this metaverse. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe there's something to this. Anybody know what time it is? 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's Miller time. It's Miller time. <laughs> anyway, I uh, appreciate that phone call, my man. Now that's a Bernays sauce. Uh, always got good good input in the chat and uh, very very active and uh, very kind to the pe- the folks in the chat. I appreciate that a lot. Thanks for thanks for being being chill, being cool, and uh, thanks for uh, giving me the tip on the Zuck stuff. I'll take a look at that as well. But uh, I don't know. Time may not exist. Time does exist. Uh, time is uh, I don't know. You tell me. I don't have any answers here. You guys know me. I'm not trying to like make up some answers for anybody other than sipping a little maybe juice and pondering the wonders of the multiverse of the omniverse even so uh that's what that's that this is a wrap uh thank you for the phone call Brene sauce and uh everybody else happy friday as well as Brene's as well happy friday to all and to all a good night ha 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 just kidding uh if you want to help the show there's a number of ways you can do that uh, thanks for hanging out thanks for being part of this thanks for uh putting the the fire of life into the belly and the bowels of troubled minds i appreciate it very much and uh that's what's going on uh if if you want to help the show, a number of ways. You can sub up here on Twitch. You can sub up on Patreon. You can sub up, of course, on uh, Rockfin, which is uh, the best value, by the way. It's 10 bucks a month. And not, not only do they send uh, me money in crypto, which is very nice there, but you also get access to all kinds of amazing stuff on Rockfin. Again, like I say, Jimmy Dore is there. You got um, Crow777, if you're into that. Sam Tripoli. You got, um, uh, again, Abby Martin of Empire Files. There's a lot of really good stuff up there. Go check it out. Go check it out. Uh, Rockfin dot com slash wait uh, links in the description uh don't don't go to rockfin directly because you got to sub up from the troubled minds page but anyway if you have any questions about that let me know send me an email troubled minds radio at gmail or you can join the discord troubled minds.org click the discord link easy as that and uh if you want to help the show but don't want to spend money no problem or you do want to spend money we got hats troubledfans.com go there buy your hats there's uh mouse pads there's stickers now uh shirts are also coming uh, troubledfans.com and uh, there you go if you don't want to spend money but you do want to help the show spread the word uh, your time and your energy is uh, vital to what we're doing and there we go there we go what's up Cal ordered mine today nice Mike's got the juice absolutely the juice some juice the maybe juice okay maybe juice hat got it got it all right maybe juice hat coming to a troubled fans store near you troubledfans.com uh, but if you want to help and uh, don't want to spend money just listen to the podcast feed there's uh, 300 and how many episodes 393 episodes on the podcast feed and not only that um, I'll bet you you haven't heard some of them and there's some really really good stuff so go check that out uh, amazing 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 stuff on that podcast feed because of you guys so thanks for being part of this thanks for having uh, ha- spending your time with me today and uh, thanks for being you appreciate it very much Michael Strange out weekend mode engaged you guys have a fantastic one <laughs>